Dayton, how uh, how's the the transition been from the end of the folk style season to uh, shift into this freestyle competition coming up this week? Uh, you know, it was pretty quick. You know, I got back and I, you know, I, I just ran for the first two days, to just give my body a little break, but then jumped back on the mat. I think on that Wednesday, and you know, freestyle has always been you know my preferred style, so it was uh, it was nice getting back into that. I know, I know. After the the finals, coach kind of felt like he, basically it was rust that he kind of saw from you in the, in the NCAA's and the semifinals and finals. Is is that a worry for you heading into Olympic trials of the fact that you've only had really a a month of true competition to kind of prepare you for this? Uh, no, not necessarily because the guys that I'm you know going to be competing against they've they haven't had very many opportunities to compete in it either. So you know we're I've. You know, I've competed probably the most in the past two months than, than everybody else. So I think that's, you know, to my advantage. Speaking of, of to your advantage, how, how helpful has it been over the past really couple of years now to have Zoe uh, training there with you? It's awesome. You know, he, uh, he gives me a different feel than a lot of, a lot of wrestlers the, in you know, the United States. He, he just has that, you know, He's really good, you know, in freestyle positions. And, you know, I've learned a lot just wrestling with him all the time. I mean, is, is there an actual, like, different st style or technique that he, he brings than, than what you see normally in the, the U.S. guys? Uh, yeah, you know, he just wrestles more like a foreigner. And, you know, they, they don't, they're not always as aggressive. You know, they're not always coming at you. It's kind of they, they sit back and, you know, a lot of counter wrestling and, you know, it's just, you know, it really helps me whenever I get past, get past the uh, wrestling in the you guys from the United States and I start wrestling guys from overseas. You know, I think it, it benefits me wrestling with him. Thanks, Aiden. Dayton, uh, let me ask you a little bit about the uh, switch and destination. This was supposed to be at Penn State. Now it's in Fort Worth. You find that a little friendlier? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a couple hours down the road for us. So it's, uh, it's gonna be nice. I'm gonna have, you know, a bunch of my family and friends there. So I'm, you know, really, really excited to, you know, go down to Fort Worth and make an Olympic team. Talk, talk us through the intensity of an Olympic trials. It, 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 I gotta think it's got a personality unlike you know, Big 12 or NCAA or unlike anything else you wrestle in? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, people's dreams are on the line. Stuff that, you know, everybody at that tournament, they've, that's what they've been working for, for, you know, their entire career is to, you know, make that Olympic team and go represent our country at the Olympics. So, you know, it's, you know, everybody's going to be on top of their game. They're all Everybody's gonna be ready, and it's uh you know it's exciting. You know that that excites me. Just you know, I've been waiting to wrestle in Olympic trials for as long as I can remember. So having that opportunity, you know, at the end of this week, it's I'm just gonna embrace the moment and you know leave everything out there. How uh, hands on is John in talking with you about the process with? freestyle in the Olympics? Uh, you know, he's he's been, you know, working a lot with me this week, just on kind of just helping me let it let loose a little bit and let it fly when, in my matches. And I think, you know, it's uh, it helped just in this past, since I've been back from NCAAs, I think he's, you know, helped me out a lot. Thanks, Dayton. Good luck to you. Thank you. Hey, Dayton, I'm just curious, you, you know, the their college season is only a few months in the year. So I'm just curious, uh, how do you balance, you know, folk style and freestyle training throughout a year? Uh, you know, to me, it's, you know, it's all wrestling. I, you know, it doesn't really, it's, you know, it's harder to go from freestyle to folk style than it is to go from, uh, Free, to folk style to freestyle just because the the mat wrestling 
you know, in folk styles, a lot tougher than the, the mat wrestling and freestyle. And so I think the transition for me is really easy to go from folk, folk style to freestyle. And I think, you know, going through a little bit of a folk style season is just going to benefit me. Thanks. Obviously, you, you've said you like freestyle more. Uh, so we, I, I'm, I kind of know where this answer is going to go, but how do you, th- how beneficial do you think it would be if they were to swap out folk style for freestyle at the college level? Oh, I mean, I, I'd love it. You know, I think, I think freestyle's, you know, a little bit more exciting just to, to the, if somebody's never watched wrestling before and they, they sit down to watch a wrestling match, I think freestyle would be, you know, a little bit more enticing to them just because, you know, there's, there's big throws, there's, you know, it's just kind of easier to understand you, you expose someone's back, you get points, you push one out of bounds, you get a point, you get a takedown, you get two points. It's just, you know, the rules are pretty simple. And it's a, I think it's a lot more fun to compete in. Now, obviously, you've got a a current teammate that'll be going down there with you. Uh, how cool is that to be able to to have AJ down there with you, and obviously a, a, a technically another former cowboy in in Jordan Oliver down there. Yeah, I mean it's it's awesome, you know, having guys from Oklahoma State going down and competing. You know, that's something that you know we've had more more Olympians and more Olympic medalists than any any other college. So you know, it's a uh, it's important to us. You know, we need to we didn't have anybody on the on the Olympic team in. 2016. So, you know, it's important that we get, get people on the team again and, you know, bring home medals. Thanks, Aiden. Hey, Dave. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about AJ. Um, You know, obviously uh, his personality has got a lot of attention in the wrestling world right now, but John said something really interesting during nationals and saying just how hard AJ works. Um, I mean, you obviously, you don't get to this level without being a hard worker. I'm wondering from your hard work to his hard work, like what do you see out of him that, you know, has, has made people so aware of just the way he works? You know, he's, he's really dedicated. And I think that's where a lot of his confidence comes from. You know, he, he knows how much work he's put in and he's just able to, you know, kind of let everything else go because he knows how hard he's worked. And, you know, that's, something that I want to take from him you know I want to be able to go out there and with just kind of that he wrestles out he wrestles like like he's kind of like a, a young like a young kid he goes out there with to have fun and to score points and you know it's awesome to awesome to watch as a as a teammate and you know it's something that I would kind of want to get back to when I mentioned his personality, I think you smiled a little bit. What uh, what is that personality like to just be around on a daily basis? Oh, he's a uh, you know he's the same <laughs> he's the same all day every day. Uh, that, that's just who he is, and you know he's he's really a great kid. And you know people might get the wrong you know the wrong image of him, but deep down he you know he means well, and he just he just wants to win, and he believes he can win. And he's not afraid to say that. Thanks, Dayton. Do we have any more questions for Dayton? Dayton, not to to rehash a couple weeks ago, but just, you know, I I know when we talked before postseason, you you talked about two years ago of finishing runner up. What's what's just been the the mindset, the the, the mental approach of, of coming up short again and and kind of brushing that off before going into, you know, an even bigger moment potentially. Yeah. Well, you know, it, uh, helped me get motivated for sure. You know, it, uh, it might've been a little bit tougher to, you know, come back to the room and go down a weight class if I would have won, you know, I would have been a little bit satisfied, but you know, I didn't. So, you know, the hunger is still there. And, you know, I know that, I know that I didn't compete, you know, to my, my full potential at NCAs. And it's, uh, it just wants me to, you know, it, I want, I want to go out there at the uh, Olympic trials and prove that, you know, I'm better than, better than that. And, you know, I know I am. And 
I'm just gonna go out there and let it fly and you know rest rest to my full potential like I know I can. Ultimately, how I guess maybe I don't know if grateful is the right word, but I mean, due to the pandemic, you get this opportunity to compete for the Olympics. Because had had the pandemic not sidelined, you know, uh, ended uh, the Olympics last year, you wouldn't have gotten this opportunity. So I mean, when when you look at the fact that you have been granted this opportunity, how, how do you look at it? Yeah, I mean, I I, I am grateful. You know, it's a uh, I really you know didn't I wouldn't have had the opportunity to you know achieve achieve one of my goals and something I've dreamt about my entire life since I've you know gotten to the sport of wrestling I wouldn't have had that opportunity and now I do so you know it's kind of like how White Sheets you know got into the NCAA tournament he you know he got a second chance kind of and you know that's that's where I'm at and I, I get a second chance to to go make an Olympic team. Good luck Swigan. Thank you. All right, looks like that's all the questions we have. Thanks for joining us, Dayton. Good luck. Thank you. And we'll have AJ Ferrari on here in a couple minutes. Uh, hold tight. Thank you. Hey, what's going on? Can you hear us, AJ? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so we have AJ Ferrari here. We'll go ahead and do kind of the same thing and open it up for questions. AJ, have you uh, come down from the high of a couple weeks ago, or are you still uh, on cloud nine from that? No, I'm still, I'm still feeling pretty good, man. I'm using this, you know, this momentum that I gained from the NCAA tournament. You know, I mean, honestly, starting at Big 12s, getting the most outstanding wrestler, just carrying that momentum with me to the NCAAs and then carrying that momentum to the Olympic trials. I'm, I'm really excited. Well, and obviously, I mean, it, it took what you did at NCAA to be able to to qualify for this weekend, right? Right. Yeah, it did. So, I mean, I, I mean, when you, when you think about it that way, I mean, how how significant, even more so, was winning that and getting this opportunity now to compete for a potential spot on the in the Olympic team? Yeah, it was really significant. I mean, I would have had to go if if I would have lost any of those matches and not won the NCAA tournament, I would have had to go to the last chance qualifier, which was this past weekend. For me, it's like, you know, I know what I'm capable of. You know, I knew that I'd go in there and put on the mat. And I mean, whenever I put on the mat, I feel like I can win any match, you know, just because of my work ethic, because the team behind me, you know, that was my goal. You know, it was three of them. The three major ones, you know, one of them was to be an NCAA champ. The other one was to be an Olympic champ. And the other one would be a world champ, you know. And I accomplished being an NCAA champ. And that has qualified me to be able to have the chance to get an Olympic team, you know, get on there and then, chase that Olympic gold medal, you know, so it's, it's great. I'm really excited for this weekend. Thanks, AJ. AJ, I'm going to ask you a little bit of an interesting question. Uh, obviously, you know, your, your love for being in Stillwater and Oklahoma state shows with your, uh, passion for everything you're doing, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm around, coach Gundy a lot and even his dad uh and I know you're I guess you've kind of become friends with Gage uh yeah. they swear they swear by you I mean they they were talking you went in the NCAA title uh a week before the NCAAs happened so right. how, how did all that come about because you got them talking you got them on the uh AJ Ferrari fan club yeah, I think it's just, you know, the confidence that people have around here, you know, in our wrestling program. And I mean, a lot of it's too. I've hung out with his son, you know, Gunner and um, his whole family, everybody, to be honest. And um, I just carry myself the way that I do. You know, I'm just very confident in, um, in myself and in my team. And um, that solely comes from, you know, the proper preparation, you know, having the faith in, in what you're doing, you know, faith in your coaches faith in your training, faith in the principles that you live by, you know, more than wrestling, it's your whole life. So, um, so yeah, I mean, people see, I've talked to coach Gundy, you know, I told him, you know, I got, I have no doubt that I'm going to win this thing, you know, and that we're going to, you know, come away with the team trophy minimum this year. Cause we had a couple guys injured. It was tough, but um, for sure. Yeah. You can see that in the whole, in the whole team and in the coaches and everybody, but yeah, it's, and, and as I said in the last interview, you know, confidence is contagious. You know, whenever you're around those people that are confident, your coaches, you know, Chris Perry, John Smith, these confident people who, you know, they've been there, they've done it. Um, it's contagious. And, and they know that I've made the sacrifices to 
to win at the highest levels. So, um, so yeah, it pays off. One other question you called, I, I listened to your interview on Sirius. You called Gary Calcagno a goat in the weight room. Yeah. Uh, and obviously that's been a big bonding between you and coach Calcagno. Yeah. Oh, it's been great. Coach Calcagno is awesome, man. He, um, me and him hit it off great. He really worked on him. I've always been really strong and explosive on or off the mat. You know, I mean, I'm quick, I'm explosive. Um, and he really worked on really transitioning that um, to wrestling, you know, to the mat. And um, it's been great. I mean, you guys have seen, I mean, I'm shooting doubles, um, college guys from my knees. I'm explosive. I'm blowing through dudes at the highest level. So it's like, it's just a blessing. And, and he's a great, someone like him, you can respect just because he's a great person. You know, he's a cool guy to be around. He, he's got that positive energy, you know, 24 seven that he just, he lives by and that he carries with him. So, um, so yeah, I can't be more thankful to have him as a strength conditioning coach. I mean, without a doubt, one of, if not the greatest strength conditioning coach in the country right now. I mean, everybody knows that. He posts videos all the time. So, um, so yeah, he's really good with wrestling-related um, functional strength. AJ, thank you. No problem. Good luck. Appreciate it. Hey, hey, AJ, I was just curious, you know, you, you being 19 years old, you know, you're coming in the Olympics. What's it like? I mean, at, as uh, obviously, you know, you won a national title, but you're still a freshman. You're competing against a bunch of, you know, older, I guess, pros with, with international experience at a high level. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing as this past weekend at the NCAAs, you know. I mean, you look at it, especially for 97 kilograms, besides Snyder and Cox, everybody's relatively young, you know, everybody's relatively anywhere from 23, maybe 22, maybe the oldest, I think 26, 27, right? So it's not like they're that much older. I mean, they're older than me, but it's the same thing as this weekend. You know, everybody's like, well, these guys have so much more experience than you, but it's like, you know, I've been putting myself in these mental scenarios, you know, my whole life. You know, I've been, I've been knowing I was going to chase this and get here, you know, so it's not a surprise to me. And at the same time, in these scenarios, I feel like for freestyle, at least, it's definitely a benefit to me just because of the way I wrestle, you know, just pushing guys out of bounds, get them to the edge, you know, guys can't really stall like they do in folk style, you know, so they can't really do that stuff. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to approach this the same mindset as the NCAA, you know, everything to gain, I'm young, nothing to lose, go out there and wrestle and leave it on the mat. And whenever I do that, I mean, I'm a dangerous guy. So I think people are going to be surprised just like they were at the NCAA tournament. You know, a lot of people doubt me. They're going to, they're going to see, uh, I didn't come to play around, you know, so I'm excited. Yeah, and, and then the other thing, you know, talking about freestyle, as a college wrestler, you know, only – the season's only three months, but how do you balance, you know, folk style and freestyle th throughout a year? Yeah, it's been it's been a quick turnaround, you know. It's kind of hard um, with a quick turnaround like this, you know. Two weeks later after winning NCAAs, you know, I'm going to be stepping on the mat, wrestling some guys who are wrestling freestyle all year round, you know. So you really got to work on your transitions quickly, you know, transitioning from freestyle to folk style or folk style to freestyle. But um, for me, freestyle, you know, has always been my favorite style. Just because I'm so powerful, you know, push guys out of bounds. You don't have to really work for the takedown on the edge. I mean, you can, but it's always easier to get the push out. Um, transitioning leg lace versus, and gut wrench versus cheap tilt, you know, that's a huge, huge thing right there. But um, And then mat awareness. Mat awareness is the biggest for sure. I've drove that a lot. Edge the mat awareness, you know, not getting pushed out, circling, um, all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling really good. Thanks. Hey, AJ. AJ, being from the uh, the Metroplex, how special is it that the trials are going to be down there? And I'm sure you're going to get quite a few uh, family members trying to get uh, get over there to watch you. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. My uh, my dad gets the opportunity. He's, he's coming too, so my family, they're just going to stay with family members. So um, it's great. I'm really excited to have my family, you know, be there, you know, get tickets and watch me. You know, I mean, it's been my dream to, you know, do this. And now the fact that they get to watch me do it and they know, you know, all the work that's been put in from such a young age, you know, they've been there, they've seen me miss the family functions sometimes, miss the birthday parties, you know, so they understand, you know, the sacrifices that have, that have been made by me and my family, you know, to get me to this point. And, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let them down. You know, I put on the line and I'm, I'm a performer, you know, I, I stress this so much. I emphasize that, that like whenever it's like the big stakes, I mean, I show up, you know, and I'm going to show up and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to take what's mine. You know, I feel like none of these dudes are putting in the work that I'm putting in, you know, making the sacrifices on or off the mat. I'm sure they're doing the same things, but I don't think to my degree, you know, at this level. So um, we'll see. That's just my belief. And we'll see if it's if it's true this weekend.
speaking of, of your dad, I, obviously, if, you know, with the, some of the videos they show, very, very passionate, competitive guy. What was that moment like for you after you won? You run up into the stands and just share that moment with him. Because uh, I know you've, you've said how, how significant he has been in getting you to that point. Oh, 100%, man. It was just, it was awesome. It was just, that moment was like something that I, I have seen, you know, growing up watching. I mean, it's my first NCAA tournament too. So taking it in, the whole tournament was awesome. But um, hugging my dad after it, you know, feeling, you know, the, the joy that we felt. I mean, it was just, it was insane. You know, words can't describe the feeling there after, you know, doing, you know, we, we had set out to do this, you know, through everything, through the ups and downs of the year. You know, it, it had been a long year and we knew, we knew that I had this goal and everybody was, you know, doubting me. Everybody was saying this, saying that, you know, and uh, we stuck it out and um, they had faith in me and I had faith in them and everything we've done. And it's just awesome, you know, to, to see that. Cause you know, my dad has made so many sacrifices just like me, you know, and, and everything in life, you know, my parents, everybody. So just to finally have it pay off, it's just awesome. You know, to hug my parents, hug my dad and my mom is just, and thank them. You know, I can't be more grateful for what they have done for me. Thanks, AJ. Hey, AJ, you were talking about how hard you uh, have worked for this and so many other things. Um, take us inside that a little bit. I mean, like, what does that look like? What did it look like, say, in those days after NCAAs? Are you right back in the room? Are you right back in the weight? Like, what, what does that look like practically for you? For me, I mean, I had to give, like, a, I think it took, like, a day and a half off just because my body was kind of beat up. You know, NCAA tournament's a long, uh, it's a long tournament because you got to make weight three times. You got to wrestle tough guys, multiple matches, you know. And then you got to, you know, go back and relax and try not to get too amped before the matches, you know. So it's it's a long tournament and um, it'll take a toll on you sometimes. You know, I was very sore and beat up. So I took a day off, day and a half, and then I was back in the weight room trying to put on some weight because it was a big, big um, weight difference, you know, between NCAAs for me, 197 going up to 213 and a half. So I really had to bulk up. Um, yeah, so that was the biggest thing. And I, I'm actually just telling you guys this. Nobody really knows, but I'm going 97 kilograms. So they just they found that out in the weigh-ins. That was like yesterday when they was released. I wasn't telling anybody, you know, seeing people, seeing if anybody's going to start studying me. I know they're going to try to do that. But, um, but yeah, it was a quick turnaround. And the biggest thing for me that really limits my training, you know, I, I, I'd train four times if I, if I could. You know, the biggest thing for me is just staying healthy. Because at my level, whenever you train this hard, at least, I mean, an hour for me is a lie. I, I used to go multiple multiple sets of two hours, but if we go a hard hour now at, at, the, at the Cowboy at, um, at Oklahoma State Resting Room, I mean, that's a hard workout, you know, and it's just being smart, you know, letting your body recover between workouts and stuff. You got to you gotta recover too because you don't want to, you know, have these injuries, especially like nagging injuries that, you know, they can get from doing so much. But, um, but right now we're, we're taking up a notch. We're going two, three times a day. I'm doing a heavy lift have you work out in the resting room and then it's a little bit of conditioning type stuff, you know, stance in motion, um, maybe some sprints, maybe a little cardio. So, um, so yeah, it's a lot. During NCAAs, John made the point of saying that you're, you're one of the hardest working guys he's ever been around. And I think about the guys that John Smith has been around during his career. <laughs> it's a long list of really talented guys. Yeah. Like, what, did, what did that, what does that sort of thing say to you about, you know, I mean, does that surprise you at all? No, it doesn't. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's something that, um, I mean, my great grandparents, you know, being third generation Italian immigrants, you know, we've always strived for my hard work ethic, you know, it's always been like the thing that like, we always like swear by, you know, I, I know my dad always told me, he was telling me this a couple of days ago, I was telling him, you know, always remember, you know, you do better than a generation before you, you know, like they've made a lot of sacrifices. And I mean, you guys can watch this interview on Stalemates, my dad talking about, you know, the sacrifices that um, my family made, you know, my grandfather moving out at 12 years old to get a job to help pay for his siblings and every single generation sacrifices and works really hard for the one next. So um, I'm, I just continue that. And my dad raised me that way. He raised me strong and where I come from, you know, having these people like Rocky Marciano, you know, coach Smith, Italian Americans who are just tough dudes that, um, that work their tail off, you know, they work their butt off. And I swear by that. And I know that there's tons of people that are talented like me, but what's going to separate me and um, really get me to the highest level, you know, is my work ethic. And um, I, I know that I've seen Coach Smith and the way he trains, and I know what it takes to be the best. And I'm willing to, to pay the price. You know, I'm willing to put my body through the exhaustion that it takes, you know, pushing through, you know, every day, especially in college. The biggest thing with me and Chris Perry and John Smith was pushing bas 
mental barriers, you know, pass these mental barriers every day, you know, whether it's cardio conditioning, drilling, whatever it is. In high school, I could just rely on just strength, you know, just doing that. But now, you know, to beat these guys who have that more experience, you know, I got to take them to deep waters and, um, and do that. So, so yeah. Hey, um, I know that uh, part of the reason why you're a confident guy is because of the work, but I think a lot of people have started taking note of you because of that personality. I know it's intertwined for you, but is there any, I don't know, do you think, hey, just don't sleep on the fact that it's the hard work that it's not the personality, like it's not bluster. Do you ever like worry about that at all? I mean, not really. I mean, I know people, I mean, see me and they see me a certain way because I carry myself a certain way, but you know, I'm strong in two things. You know, I'm strong in what we're talking about. I'm strong in my work ethic. I'm, I, I'm faithful in that. and I'm faithful in God. You know, I have, I have a good relationship with God. You know, I feel like God rewards people for, you know, being good. And I feel like I try to, you know, good, do good things every day. I'll try being good to my family, good to my coaches, you know, and they're good to me. And so whenever you're around people with that strong, you know, positive environment and uh, you have faith in God, you know, I mean, you're going to be confident in yourself. You're going to be confident in everything you do. So that's just the way that I was raised. You know, my dad raised me that way. And that's the way I carry myself through my wrestling, through everything, you know, because I know that, you know, God has a bigger plan for me than anything that I can see, you know, visible. He knows what my, uh, what my ultimate path is going to be, you know. And for me, it's much more than just wrestling. So that's, that's the why I'm so faithful and, and so confident in myself and in my family. Thanks, AJ. AJ, since boasting the, uh, the, the deadlift weight, have you had anybody challenge you? <laughs> I've had a couple people reach out to me and say some stuff. But um, what people don't know, too, is that I did that 665-pound deadlift. That was after wrestling. So I had a workout in the morning. This is back home. And I hit that at night. So uh, I could do I could probably deadlift 600 right now. Six, 600 probably pretty easy. I mean, right now I'm doing reps because I'm putting on size. And just staying strong, and it's and it's not worth the chance of getting hurt wrestling so much. But um, in the off season, I mean, this is a very high probability. I mean, I, I wouldn't say high. I say 50, 50 next year, whether or not I go ninety seven or heavyweight. And if I end up going heavyweight, you guys will see me deadlift seven hundred pretty easily, like without a doubt. Like I've always been big into deadlifting, and I'm extremely explosive and strong, and that movement is just really good for me, and it's good for wrestlers. So I'm I'm happy that people make it a big deal though, because I think a lot of people are going to implement it into their workout routine for wrestlers and for wrestling that's huge because it's such a I mean you're always lifting people up it works a lot of back a lot of core so um it's a great exercise but um but yeah I've had some people reach out to me and like say I'd like challenge it to a deadlift you know workout type thing but at the end of the day I deadlift and I work out for wrestling purposes you know I'm not a bodybuilder or a powerlifter I mean my goal was to get that strength so that I could correlate it to the mat you know and I hit one of I hit the 600 pound squat and I'll, I'll hit the 700 pound deadlift eventually for sure. But it's just a matter of time. You know, it's hard getting that, you know, working up to really high weights when you're staying so lean at 197 and I, I can't eat. You know, it's dangerous lifting that heavy whenever you're in a caloric you know, deficit versus a caloric surplus. Like right now, I'm lifting heavy because I'm on that caloric surplus. I'm trying to gain weight so um, I can lift heavier. But um, I'll, I'll eventually for sure surpass that 665 pound deadlift. Speaking of, of, of teasing the, the heavyweight, uh, the move to heavyweight, you mentioned it out, uh, on ESPN as well. What's, I mean, kind of what's the, the thought process? Why do you, why do you want to possibly make that move up to heavyweight? Um, just the challenge, you know, I feel like at 197, I feel like obviously next year it would be great, but I feel like if I wanted to do this for five years, I could definitely do it. And I was talking about it. I was like, without a doubt, I want to. I think I could do it for five years. And I'd probably go down as the greatest 197-pound wrestler ever, perhaps. I mean, if I won five of them, like I should, you know. But for me, it's like I love lifting. And I want to enjoy the sport, you know. And I'm naturally getting bigger. Like, my body is just growing in ways like thicker, thickness, you know, width and, and my bone structure. So it's like, why go against that, you know. So, um and I, and I know I can put on the size and I'm dedicated and disciplined to the weight room and to eating. So um, we'll see. We're, we're going to see how big I can get. I'll definitely be bulking up. You guys will see me get bigger than most people are going to think people are going to be really surprised, you know. But um, it's up to my coaches, whatever's best for the team, you know, whichever my coaches feel is best for me. And they're ultimately make that decision. You know, Coach Smith is really good with that stuff. So, um, so yeah, but um, I, I love lifting and I love bulking and eating. And it helps being Italian, having a Stay home Italian mom who lives seven minutes away from you, who's got some of the best Italian recipes in the whole world. So um, that's always great. So um, shout out to my mom, Mama Ferrari. 
she um, she made. I mean, I just had some chicken cutlets and spaghetti and meatballs last night, and it was fantastic. Let's put it that way. Hey, AJ, you know, speaking so, of the heavyweight, what what was the interaction like with uh, with with Gable after uh, that uh, photo of champions? I mean, me and Gable, everybody know we have different opinions on certain things. You know, he has his views, I have my views on things, and. At the end of the day, we're just very competitive. You know, if we end up wrestling down the road, I'm sure we'll probably start going. It'll get a little heated again, I'm sure. But um, either way, you know, you got to respect him. He, he works hard, too, you know, and he um, he does his thing. I mean, he just won the Hodge, just won the NCAA title. So um, it's different whenever you just see stuff online versus actually meeting him, you know. So it was, it was a little different perspective. My perspective kind of changed on him a little bit. But, um, but yeah, I respect for what he does. We have different opinions, but it is what it is. Hey AJ, just go, going back to you uh, wait, about your mom. Uh, uh, what is your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite dish? Dish? Dish that she makes? Yeah, my favorite dish. Yeah, and that's tough. From from my mom, probably the chicken colors, chicken parm for sure. Yeah. But uh, my uncle, honestly, my uncle Vinny, he owns a pizzeria, Ferrari's Pizzeria, in uh, in Texas, in Plano, Texas. And man, I could die right now for his for some of his pizza. I would go crazy for that. He makes some of the best pizza, New York style pizza, man. It is to die for. So, um, so yeah, I'd, I'd like to have some. I haven't had some good pizza in a long time. Stillwater pizza is not all the best, but um, but yeah, definitely chicken parm for my mom. It's actually a recipe from my great grandmother and my grandmother. They make it the best, and the spaghetti meatballs, of course, that goes with it. But um, the pizza from my uncle Vinny, who owns Pizzeria for us, Pizzeria is like so good. I'll probably have some after Olympic trials this weekend. I'll be down there. I wasn't even thinking. I'll probably have some. So, so you're telling me that you're not a you're not a fan of Hideaway? Oh my goodness, you have no idea. They took me there on my official visit, and they were like, "This is supposed to be the best pizza, you know? It's it's best pizza, right?" Nobody knows what good pizza is here. Okay, they have no idea. This is Oklahoma. Everybody's like country and southern. You guys have no idea what good pizza is unless you go to Chicago or New York. And I've been there and I've actually had it. My goodness, when I went to Hideaway, I was like, "What is this? Is this even pizza?" Like, come on. Thanks, man. You're, thank you. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, no uh, national letter or na uh, a name image likeness uh, deal for you from Hideaway, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, no, unfortunately. Sorry, guys. Got to keep it real. Yeah. Is, is that thing supposed to be coming out here next year? I mean, is that for real? I mean, that'd really be a big deal for someone it like is. me, you know. Especially with my, my name and likeness, I feel like I'd be able to get a good sum of money, at least as a college student, you know, it helped me out. Well, well yeah, AJ, I mean, you know, speaking speaking of that, you you know, the, the fact a nice cross promotion is tonight that, you know, you're throwing the first pitch out of baseball game, right? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just, I mean, you know, the, the athletic department, you know, they they see you and, you know, they're they're going to, they're going to put you out of, on a big stage at Bedlam. Just, you know, how awesome has the support from, you know, the, the OSU community been? It's been awesome. I mean, I walked down the street and people were yelling national title for Philly, baby. I mean, I, I started a trend too, that, that flex that I did where I turn over and I flex forward like this, all the softball girls do it now on our team after they get home runs and stuff. So it's been awesome, man. Stillwater is a great place. You know, it's, it's a small town with like a, it's like a big people feel, you know, it's, it's kind of in the middle. I like it. And um, it's just a great place to be. And yeah, just having that opportunity to start a trend like that and, and just get the, the town, you know, I, I told us, but, you know, we got to bring a national title back to Stilly, you know, we have to. So, um, and I did it and it's, it's just been great. I mean, whenever people see me, they're like inviting me to come to parties and I'm like, I can't right now. Cause I gotta be okay. Like careful because of COVID. But after, after this Olympic trials, I'll be bringing that trophy to, all over Stilly and people will be going crazy. I know they will. So, um, so yeah. Thank you. No Are you throwing from the mound or, you know, what's, what's the plan tonight for pitch? Yeah. I used to play a little baseball when I was younger. And I mean, not to brag, I'd like to say I'm a pretty good athlete. I mean, a freak athlete, right? Mr. Fast Twitch. There's not much Mr. Fast Twitch can't do. So um, I'll, I'll do a couple of one pitches and I'm going to throw a good pitch. I think I'm gonna try to throw a good fastball or something, and then do maybe some OSU and maybe give a good flex to the OU crowd, you know, tell them, tell them what's up. And then, um, and then, yeah, that'll be it. And then hopefully we'll kick some butt. Let's go OSU baseball. Let's go. Have you decided yet if it's going to be shirt or no shirt? Um, I have, but I can't tell you. 
All right. <laughs> Good luck all with right. that. Well, I think that's all the questions we have for AJ. Thanks for joining yeah. us, AJ, and taking Thanks, time. AJ. No problem. Thanks, Reed. See you guys. You guys have a good day. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Reed. Thank you.